for most of us who have who are praying tarawih, we're on the 19th para, and in that para we have Surah Naml. And in Surah Naml is a very fascinating, very compelling story of Sulaiman alayhi salam um, and the story of the ants, and many of us are familiar with it. And the purpose of these stories, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, and each of these stories, and grammatically, this verse is meant to say that every single one of these stories, emphatically, and, and there is a purpose for why every every single story has been mentioned in the Quran. And each of these stories that we have narrated to you, God, just to the Prophet وسلم, that we have narrated, narrated these stories in order that we may strengthen your heart, we may, we may solidify your heart, we may grant firmness to your heart. So there are lessons that we can implement in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, Sallallahu he's coming with his army, and Hatta ida atau ala wad al they come on a valley of ants. Now, um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had granted Sallallahu the power of street. وَعَلِمْنَا مَنْطِقَ الطَّيْرِ وَسَخَرْنَا مَعَهُ الْجِبَالَ وَالطَّيْرِ وَالْرِيحِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted Sulaiman the power of speaking to birds, of subjugating the, the, the mountains and the, the winds to Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Mantiq al has a very interesting genealogy in Islam. Farid ibn Abdad, who is this poet that actually inspires Rumi in 12th century Iran, writes an entire Sufi treatise called Mantiq al -Tayb. And so this incident has, a, and, and then Mirza Ghalib in India ends up actually recreating the, the story of Mantiq al in, in Persian verse. Which is, uh, I digress. But so, so the ants say, حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سريمان وجنوده. That so this ant tells another ant, tells the entire colony of ants that move away unless that Sulaiman al Salam will trample you with with his army and and, and his horses. وهم لا يشعرون they won't know. Now because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had granted the power. Of, of the wind and, and speaking to animals to Sulaiman he heard this. Sulaiman he smiled in this state of amusement because he heard, he heard the ants. And what is the first thing that he said? Not that I thank you, O Allah, that O Allah give me the power, give me the tawfiq of thanking you. Rumi has this beautiful couplet. Bay adab mad mahroom as fazli rab. Oh Allah, grant me not not adab, but grant me the tawfiq of doing adab to you. Because the bay adab man, the person who is bay adab, who doesn't have adab, he is mahroom as fazli rab. He is deprived of the fazl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They have the saying in Urdu, ba adab ba naseeb, bay adab bay naseeb, and bad adab bad naseeb. That someone who has adab, he has good naseeb. Someone who has no adab, he has no naseeb. But someone who has terrible adab, he has terrible naseeb. So it's better that you have no other than you have bad other. And so this purpose of, of the the purpose of this is to highlight so that Sulaiman alayhi salam's statement. In fact, his 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 conceptual gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That wa qala rabbi awzi'ani an ashkura ni'matika allati. That our religion is a religion of speech. There is so much emphasis placed on speech in Islam. And this is something that when Europe came into India, they didn't understand. They thought we were all illiterate. Right? And in, 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 in Surah Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيَّ الَّذِي That those people who follow the unlettered prophet. The unlettered prophet, he couldn't read. Right? اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ not, not write down, recite. Because there is so much power in how much we speak. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنَ اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا That, oh you who have taqwa, say things that are straight. Kikiba. Say things that are that are, that are just straight, Sadat al Mustaqeen. Right? And this is something that, which is why there is so much emphasis that the Quran wasn't written down until after the Prophet passed away. That there is so much, there is so much power in the way that we speak in this materialist, Eurocentric world that we live in. We don't really understand the implications of how much we speak, right? We have the First Amendment, the free speech, and it's as long as it's not harassment or hate speech, all of that is fine. But that's not how it works in Islam. We have an entirely different ilmi bunyad. We have an entirely different um, conception of knowledge in Islam and the way we speak. And remind the believers, because verily in your speech, there is, th there is this metaphysical element, there is this divine element in your speech. In your capacity as a human. Inna Allah khalaqa Adama fi suratihi as Bukhari al-Muslim narrate. That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Adam in his own image. 
And, and one of those elements is the way that we speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kaleem. Allah my Iqbal has this, has this part, Farsi couplet. In kari hakim may nis, in kari kaleem may gheer, sad bandai sahil mast, yak bandai darya mast. That this, this work is not the work of a doctor, but it's the work of Kaleem, meaning Musa alayhi salam, right? وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَىٰ تَكْلِيمًا That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa, right? He didn't send a letter, he spoke. And that, that speech is also embedded in all of our lives, in all of our souls, in alim al that that this was, this, was, this was implemented within us. And it's really, it's, it's, it's incredibly important it's so easy for us to say things that we don't even realize that Rasulullah has a hadith that how, how often does it happen that a person, a Muslim, he says something and it, and, and, and it drops him in the pits of hell. في زخر النار And then how, and, um, and Rasulullah has this another hadith where he says that, that three things will take a person to hellfire. And one of those things, قيل قال, he said, she said. That we forward a message, right? We forward a meme. We, we just say something, yeah, I heard someone say, I saw you share a Facebook post. That has metaphysical elements within our community that we don't understand, that this materialist world doesn't understand, doesn't engage. But this is something that has been very profound and very entrenched in our tradition from the Prophet to Rumi, to Iqbal, to Mirza Ghalib. And, and it's incredibly important as we go through Ramadan that we remember this, that more important then many of our physical ritualistic deeds is that we aware that we that we're aware we're cognizant of what we say. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وسائر المسلمين استغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر وكلا نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك وجاءك في هذه الحق موعدة وذكرى للمؤمنين وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو كان لابن آدم واديا من ذهب لأحب أن يكون له واديان وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في أثر آخر احترز من قيل وقال صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين
الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى واز واعز واجل واهم واتم واكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيموا الصلاه